faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, for your great love, for your mercy, for your grace, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for every good and perfect gift that comes down from the Father of lights. Lord, we know that there's no variableness in you, no shadow of turning. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. You are great and greatly to be praised. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Everybody say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Give him a hand clap this morning. Praise God. Amen. God bless you all. You may be seated. Thank you for being here this morning. Praise God. Thank you, Tim, for opening. Great job, as always. Suzanne and Tammy. Peter, thank you for helping us to worship the Lord. Amen. Praise God. God is good. Thank you, Lord. I'm, going to, uh, I'm just going to go right to the Word this morning. Praise the Lord and uh, spare you my usual dry, not-so-funny humor. Praise the Lord. I'm laughing on the inside, so praise God. Just one. Just one. Amen. I do want to mention one thing, though. Uh, Yvette, I, I, I did mention this last week, but Yvette's going to, uh, she's kind of uh, initiating this uh, food or clothes closet, excuse me, and uh, the Lord's kind of put a burden on her heart to do something for the uh, people who may be struggling uh, with uh, finances and other things. So uh, starting March, the first uh, Saturday in March, we're going to have a clothes closet uh, open up for the day. And anybody, uh, if you know anybody or uh, anybody in the neighborhood, they don't have to be from this area. Uh, just somebody that maybe is going through some tough times or just has a need for some clothing. Uh, amen. Just tell them to come and we'll, we'll get into the details as we move forward. But what we're going to do is just do it once a month rather than try to keep an ongoing clothes closet, which we had years ago before the flood and we had all the issues downstairs. But this way we can, everybody can bring whatever things they have, bring it to the church, We'll open it up, let people come in, take as much as they want, everything, anything. And then whatever's left over, we'll either give it to people that we know of to can pass it on to family or friends or neighbors or whatever it might be. Or we'll, if, as a last resort, we'll just take it to Goodwill. We'll take it someplace where somebody will get some good out of it, okay? So keep that in mind. Be praying about it. If you have some, If you're like most of us, you've got stuff in the closet that's been hanging there. You keep moving around it for years. Amen. Or else it's in your basement or the garage or wherever you stash your stuff. Amen. Uh, But we all got something you can give. And, you know, a lot of times we look at this stuff and we think, you know, I don't want to wear that. There are people that would love to wear it. Just be a brand new thing for them and something that would help them uh, to feel better about themselves and maybe help them with a job search or whatever it might be. So, okay? That'll be great. Yeah. We just take them around wherever you hang out and where places you go, and you can just leave them laying around, or if you know somebody, give it to them. And you might be surprised what an what impact it can have. So praise the Lord. It's more, it's more about Yvette being obedient to the Lord, yes. right? I mean, she, yes. God's dealing with her, and so we want to be able to help her uh, be obedient to the Lord, and everybody gets blessed in the, as a result. Amen? All right. Praise the Lord. God bless all of you. Appreciate you again being here. Uh, traveling through this mess and I apologize for the parking lot it's just a big mud hole but there's not much we can do about it this time of the year it'll be froze again by Thursday (laughs) so we'll when warm weather actually gets here then we'll get some rock in there so we can track white rock instead of mud all right praise the Lord all right if you will Peter let's uh, let's just I'm going to kind of preface this message a little bit with some scriptures and uh but we'll get to it. So 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17 is where I want to start. And you know, every time uh, there's a death, especially when it's a younger person or someone who's 
I mean, Doak wasn't a little kid, but I mean, come on, he was 60 some years old. He's not, that's, that's, that's young. Yes. It's young when you get to be my age, praise the Lord. It gets younger every year. But I'm just saying there are unanswered questions and everybody has them. I've lost a, a brother or two brothers, in fact, and a sister, uh, not to mention parents. But, um, and I know it's a challenge to the intellect. Spiritually, we just, we say praise the Lord and we know that uh, he's with the Lord and they all are. Thank God that my siblings or my uh, family, they're saved, they're with the Lord. It, it's not the kind of thing that we grieve like people who don't know the Lord. But there's still a grieving. I mean, there's still a loss. There's still a, you don't have that here now relationship. Amen. And it's difficult to deal with. But here's the deal. You can imagine the devil and what he's dealing with. Right? He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. God took the sting of death away from him. He can no longer kill us. And he can't overwhelm us. And so he's freaking out right now because right now we should be laying in the aisles crying and bawling and carrying on and boo-hooing and, and just going on and on and on. But he can't touch us. It's a slap right in the face of the devil, and he's nothing he can do about it because we know we are more than conquerors. We are victorious. Amen. Doak has won the victory. Praise the Lord. He's where everybody's going to want to be at some point. Amen. So thank God, amen, that the devil, God has the last word in every situation and every circumstance. Therefore, we should have the last word. It ain't over. Praise the Lord. Jesus is on the throne. Amen. Amen. And we are seated there with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Yes. Amen. So 2 Corinthians 5, 17, he says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. That translates uh, new in kind or first uh, type. Amen. New in quality. Amen. If we're in Christ... We are a whole new species. Never existed before until Jesus. Amen. Once we get saved, once we get born again, we are, it's the same as saying, saying I'm saved is the same as saying I'm in Christ. It's, they're synonymous terms. They mean the same thing. Amen. Born again. That means refathered. We have been refathered by our heavenly father. Amen. And so uh, our genealogy, you're not going to find your true genealogy. You're not going to find it in Ancestry.com. Right. Been there and done that. I mean, I, I went through some of that stuff just because I come from a kind of a, like most of us, I got a weird background and uh, adopted and, you know, by my stepfather. But I mean, my natural mother and, you know, everybody's, we got stuff, you know. So there was a time when I was really interested in what am I? The closer I got to the truth, the less I wanted to know, praise the Lord. But uh, I'm saying, our genealogy, amen, is found in the Bible. You want to know your ancestry, you want to know your DNA, it's right here. That's you, this is you, this will, this will identify you, praise the Lord. So everything that Christ did, He did for you. And then, not only did he do it for you, he then accounted it to your record. Yes. In heaven, it's written, everything Jesus did, it's written under your name. I mean, it's, it's hard for us to get our head around this, but that's how God sees you. You know, we talked about last week, seeing ourselves, you know, in a glass darkly. Uh, well, they had brass mirrors and they didn't, they, when we look at it today, uh, it's the analogy doesn't even fit because we look into a mirror and we see pretty much what it is whether we want to or not you, you can't do anything about it all you can do is identify the problem right well they they had these old mirrors and they were bra bronze and brass and they didn't even give a clear reflection you couldn't even see parts of your physical being right and that's what Paul was talking about he said we see that's the way we see in the spirit realm right now. Amen? We get glimpses. As Tammy was talking about, there are times when it's just as clear as a bell. But a lot of times, 
we're seeing dimly. In other words, we don't see ourselves as we really are. We're, we're seeing a kind of a, a blotchy, undeveloped picture of what God says we are. Of who God has already identified us as. Amen? So, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2. Everything Jesus did, He did it for you. And then He wrote it to your account. Paul said, I knew a man in Christ... Above 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell or whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knows. Such a one caught up to the third heaven. He said, I knew a man in Christ. And that's true of every one of you that's born again. I knew some men in Christ. I knew some women in Christ, right? If you're born again, that's you're in Christ. And that's what Paul's talking about there. Amen. See, through, in, by, with, all, they're, they're all prepositions. Right. So, every time he says, in Christ, uh, for Christ, by Christ, with Christ, he's defining something about us that we have a problem understanding. Because if you go through the Bible, you'll find over and over and over throughout here, all the times he talks about in Christ, or by Christ, or with Christ. And it identifies things that we kind of just take for granted and don't pay that much attention to. But the truth is, every one of us are in Christ. Every one of us, amen, are with Christ. Every one of us have the same reality as Christ. Now, Galatians 2 and verse 20. And I'm going to show you what I mean here. Galatians 2 verse 20. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That's identification. That's how we are identified. It's not what's on my driver's license. It's what's in this word that identifies me for what is really meaningful, what, for what's really important. Amen? So what, is, what, he, what, what that means is to, to, if, if I'm identified, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, but it's not me, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live, I live in the flesh, I live, that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. How does that? Well, his faith yes. took him to the cross. Yes. His faith is what put me in him. Yes. We make it all about us, which is, there, there's some truth to that. We need to believe. But the truth is, without his faith, I don't have, my faith was meaningless. Oh, exactly. Amen. So, here's what it means. To identify, or identification is, you consider or treat them the same. So if I'm identified with Christ, right, as far as God's concerned, I am Christ. I don't freak out on me here. When I show my ID, if I'm going to a club, I'm not, but I'm just saying, and they ID me. Every once in a while I get ID'd. It's, I know better. It's not because they don't know. They just got a law they got to they got to see the ID, right? So if, if it's a policeman that stops you, whatever it is, they, they, they want to check your ID, right? That ID is the same as me. Legally speaking, the ID represents me. It, it is me. We are one and the same, right? My ID is me. That's why they want proof. I'm, say, I'm thinking, here I am. I mean, I know it's me. Right? right? Yes. But they want an ID. Right. The ID is the same as me. Yes. Yeah. Right? Yes. It's the same thing. Well, your spirit ID is the Word of God. Yes, it is. Yes. Yes. Right? That's what the devil comes looking for. He's checking IDs. Yeah. Yes. Amen? Yes. And he wants to know, do you know you're legal? Yeah. 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 Good 
You're legal to operate in everything that Jesus operates in because you're one and the same, if you know that. And that's what the devil is always... He's always checking IDs, man. I mean, he's always looking for the real thing. Yes. Praise the Lord. So, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. How do I know? Because he said it. Yes. That's my ID. Amen. I'm more than a conqueror yes. through Jesus Christ, right? Yes. I'm healed. By his yes. stripes, I'm healed. Amen. Yes. I'm prospered. He became poor that I would become rich. I'm delivered. No weapon formed against me can prosper. Amen. I am strong. Let the weak say, I'm strong. Praise the Lord, because he's strong. Yes. All right. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 10. See, the devil wants, because we see something we don't understand, he wants us to back off and say, well, okay, I guess we don't understand this. I don't have to understand everything. I just got to say what he says. It's God's responsibility. That stuff is His responsibility. True. I'm just going to praise the Lord. Yes, true. Amen. Well, my brother, uh, my youngest brother, was uh, he had a health issues, and he was, uh, anyway, he was in the hospital, and uh, he was unconscious, had been unconscious from the time we found him and took him to the hospital and so forth. And I stayed down there all night long because they wouldn't let you stay in the room. He was you know, kind of the same condition that, as they described dope. Um, unresponsive totally, and as far as they were concerned, brain dead, but I wasn't buying it because I had something else to go by. Right. So every hour, I'd set my alarm. Every hour, I'd go to the, wa the waiting area. Yeah. Every hour, the alarm would go off. I'd go in, and I'd speak life. Yeah. Eventually, you know, the, the family had to make a decision, and and they made the decision. And I was really aggravated and frustrated and kind of not knowing how to deal with it, you know, quite how to respond to it. Yeah. And the Lord spoke to me and said, do you believe me? I said, yes, I believe you. He said, then act like it. Yeah. See, we look at things that are not as though they are. True. I did the same thing with my sister. True. I did the same, my younger brother who because of medications and other things, took his own life. I mean, you, you can't reconcile these things in the natural. No. But I know what the Word of God says. Yes. And I've seen people raised from the dead. I've prayed for people. We've all, we've all had experiences where we have seen the reality of this. Yes. Amen. Amen. And so that's what God expects from us, to believe Him. No matter what you're seeing. Yes. Yes. Amen. There, there's, there's, a, there's a truth that's far greater than any fact that any of us know about. Yes, true. Praise the Lord. So let me just, let's look at this in uh, Genesis chapter 6. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Okay, so we're just carrying on the same idea. We have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. We put him on when we got born again. That's why we have to renew our minds because we forget that we have him on. Right? right? It says we have the mind of Christ. Paul said put on the mind of Christ. Right. So we got it. It's just a question or not whether we're operating with it. Using it. Alright, Genesis chapter 6, verses 8 and 9. Now I'm just going to give you a few things here to to move forward with, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. Perfect. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Job chapter 1 and verse 8. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? Perfect. 1 Kings 11.4. For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord 
his God, as was the heart of David, his father. David's heart was perfect. Yeah. Solomon's wasn't. Mm -hmm. So the Bible tells us uh, these three men were perfect or their hearts were perfect with God. But the Bible also tells us that they were not perfect in the sense of being sinless. You know, Noah was a drunk, or at least for a while. Job blamed God, accused God, and had to humble himself because of it. And David, well, what do we need to say about David? He, he multiplied sin. I mean, he was into all kinds of stuff that he shouldn't have been into. And yet, the hearts of these men were perfect with the Lord. I don't know about you, but that gives me some hope that I wouldn't have otherwise. They all experienced failure. They all experienced uh, sin and behaviors that didn't line up with their identity that God had given them. Yeah. Perfect in the Lord. Amen? That's and that's because they went on to reveal the glory and the power of God. Yes. Yes. Even though, as we read in the scripture, they were imperfect in the natural. Right. Yet they were perfect as far as God was concerned. Yes. So we've got to realize that perfection is determined by the time, by the dispensation that the people are living in, as well as the revelation that's available to them. Right. Now, as to attitude or, or spirit, the perfection would be the same. Right? Perfection would just be perfection. Right. But in its content, there would be a big difference. In other words, how it would be judged, how that perfection would be judged, right? Perfection in a 10-year-old is very different from perfection in a 30-year-old, right? You say it's perfect at that age, but if he were 30, uh, not so much. It wouldn't be perfect, would it? Amen? So nothing, in truth... In the natural, nothing was really made perfect under the Old Covenant. Right. It was actually exposing sure. what was imperfect. Yeah. Right. But Christ came to reveal and work out and impart true perfection. Yes. Yes. True yes. perfection. Yes. And the perfection revealed in the New Covenant is something infinitely higher and more spiritual and more effective, and yet at the root, they're the same. Yeah. Yeah. God looks at the heart. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. First Thessalonians 5, verse 18 to 24. Now that used to bother me, that God looked at the heart, because I didn't know for sure what my heart was saying. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because we confuse the intellect with the heart. Yeah. And God's talking about the spirit. Yeah. Amen. That's why he could see people in the old covenant and say, perfect. Yes. Why? Because they had a heart for God. They wanted God. They wanted the experience. They, they failed miserably in the pursuit of it. But God saw the heart. Yes. I want God. I want to experience God. I want to know God. I want to, yes. I want to be what God wants me to be. Yes. But I'm a screw up. Yes. You know, I, I lose my patience or I, I get tired of the yes. struggle. I get tired of the battle. And God yes. says, but his heart Jesus. is perfect you, with me. So in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit. Now, when, when we learned of, of Doak's uh, passing... Sally mis kind of misunderstood that Jane was talking about him going home, and she thought he meant he went home. I knew what she, as soon as Sally told me, I knew exactly what she was talking about. Mm -hmm. In fact, I texted Don shortly after that, and I just assumed that Sally knew, but she didn't. Oh. So she, I was talking then Friday, because we didn't really say much more about it at the time. And then uh, Friday we were talking, and I was talking about, you know, we should just... Praise the Lord. I know it sounds 
sacrilegious or it sounds disrespectful or whatever. But I said, it is what it is now and we need to praise the Lord. We need to, we need to know that our, our confidence is in God. Just because I don't understand the way it turned out. And then, then it dawned on her what, what Jane had told her. So she's, you know, and now all of a sudden she's struggling with these two things going on at the same time. Bang, all of a sudden she realizes what it was that had taken place. But at the same time, what's, what's our response going to be? What's our attitude going to be? Because I've, we've all experienced this where people don't get what they think they should get. And then they want to blame God and get mad at God and leave the church and leave God and throw Him off and, and run off into some other kind of crazy stuff simply because they didn't understand the situation. They didn't really have a love for God. They just had a desire for something from God. He'll supply all our needs according to His riches and glory, but sometimes there's stuff that we don't understand. We just got to say, okay, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I know you're on my side. I know you have nothing but my good. Amen. And so I'm not going to judge. I'm not going to critique. I'm not going to try to figure out something. Who am I? Right. He's God. Right. Yes. If, if I could figure Him all out, He wouldn't be God. Exactly. Right. He'd just be my big brother, or he'd just be somebody like me. And, I, and man, we got to have something more than that. Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So despise not prophesying. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Yes. Praise the Lord. Abstain from all appearance of evil. The very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul body be preserved blameless or perfect under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. Yes. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Verse, look, can you go back to verse 23, Peter? And the very God of peace perfect you. That's the other translation. The very God of peace perfect you wholly. Spirit, soul, body preserved blameless. Perfect. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Noah, I mean, he, he, he builds an ark. He believed God. Yeah. Survives the flood. Yes. And then decides he's going to be a, yeah. a wine taster. <laughs> Praise yeah. the Lord. Yeah. And he <laughs> developed a taste for wine. And he gets drunk, and it creates a bunch of issues. But the point is, he believed God. For 120 years, he's building an ark. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That's what God's looking at. He's not looking at the incident where he got drunk, he, got, he did something stupid, he just wasn't, you know, operating in the, in the true identity that, he, that the God had given him. But God said, he's perfect in his generations. Yes. Yes. And he was blessed by God. Yes. God told him after the flood, he says, he, told, he was like Adam. He said, go and multiply, replenish the earth, yeah. and I'm going to make a covenant with all of humanity through you. Yeah. Amen. Wow. You went through this, but you trusted me, yeah. and now I'm going to, because of your confidence, every time you see a rainbow, everybody that comes after you yeah. is going to say, that's God's promise. Yeah. Yeah. That's the proof of his covenant that he made with Noah. Noah. I'll never destroy the earth again with water. I'd say, I wouldn't mind having that epitaph. Perfect in the eyes of God. And God will say, now everybody that looks at a rainbow from now on is going to remember my covenant with Noah. Because he was a faithful man. Because he believed me. Job believed God. And... It's, it's almost comical because it's so like all of us. Job's saying, I don't know why God brought this on. His wife's saying, curse God and die and, yeah. you know, all these kind of things. But it says that Job said, uh, I have heard by the ear. Now, he's gone through some stuff. Mm -hmm. And he said, I've heard about God. I've heard about the power of God, the, the goodness of God, the faithfulness of God. But he said, now, mm -hmm. I've seen it. Now, he didn't see God in the flesh, but he saw into the spirit realm. He said, I, heard, I had all these thoughts, and I've heard these things, but now having trusted God, I've seen the truth of God. And the scripture says that 
God turned his captivity and gave him two times what he had lost. Praise the Lord. David, he believed God. He was a man after God's own heart. He was a foul up from the word go. I mean, he screwed up big time. And these were not accidental things. They were plans that he laid and went about to commit adultery and then murder the, the, the woman's husband. I mean, this wasn't just, whoops, didn't realize it. No, he, he planned this thing out. It was premeditated. And yet God says, now this is amazing to me. And God said he was perfect in his heart towards God. Look at Psalms 32, verse 1 through 11. Just, just when you read the Psalms and you think of David in this context, it changes the whole picture of these Psalms. It shows how much he understood God's goodness toward him. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. This is David talking. He's talking about himself. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. When I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture was turned into the drought of summer. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions, transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. For this shall every one that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely in the floods of great waters they shall not come nigh unto him. Thou art my hiding place. He's, tell, he's saying, look, I'm, a, I'm as big a screw up as you're ever going to find. But I'm going to give you some truth. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with psalms of deliverance. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with my eye. Yes. Be not as the horse or as the mule which has no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with a bit and bridle, lest they come near unto thee. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy shall compass him about. Yes. Praise the Lord. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart or that have a perfect heart towards God. Praise the Lord. Psalms 33, verse 4 through 9. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For the word of the Lord is right. All his works are done in truth. He loveth righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. He gathered the waters of the sea together as a heap. He layeth up the deep in the storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spake and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. Verse 22. Let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us according as we hope in thee. Praise the Lord. Genesis 17, verse 1 through 4. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram, to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me. Be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee. Thou shalt be a father of many nations. Now, I'm, at, I'm just wondering if God came to me and said, Look, I'm going to do something awesome for you. It all just hinges on you being perfect. Well, next. But see... What he meant by perfect and what we think of perfect are two different things. What he was telling Abram was, if you believe me, you're perfect. If you'll trust me, you're perfect. Think about it. That's all salvation is, isn't it? We just trust the Lord. We trust his word. Amen. And we're perfect. That quick. That fast it happens. 24 years since God called Abram told him to leave his father's house. And he obeyed. Imperfectly, but he obeyed. Be thou perfect. 
Abram's faith had been tried. 24 years and nothing. His faith was about to be changed to vision in the birth of Isaac. See, God knew Abram was perfect, but Abram didn't know he was perfect. Faith had to be exercised. There had to be trust. There had to be confidence in God. And Abraham had to learn to trust without any evidence. Without any... Because it's the trusting without evidence that gives us the proof, that gives us the vision, that gives us the fulfillment. Amen? And the time... See, we want to set times because we are here on this planet for so many years. And then it's over, as far as this is concerned. But God's not in time. No. He doesn't look at it that way. He's trying to convince us of our identity. And if it takes our entire lifetime on earth wow. for that to happen, wow. that's what's going to happen. Yeah. Because the moment we shut our eyes in this world yeah. and open them in the next, yeah. we know who we are. Oh, yes. There won't be any question in your mind. That your genealogy will not be just, you know, challenged. Yes. Praise the Lord. He's Almighty God. All things are possible. All of His power is working for those who trust Him. Yes. Praise the Lord. And all He asks of Abraham is, be perfect with me. Trust me. Believe me. Mm. Hebrews 11.8. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out, not knowing where he was going. Praise the Lord. I mean, if this isn't life, I don't know what is. We're asked to believe in something we can't see. We're asked to trust in things that don't manifest. Oh, he kala mohoshite. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, I'm believing that God is saying, you believe and you pray and you confess. And even if it doesn't happen, that's your truth. That's your fact. That's your reality because nothing can change until we do. Don't we have the greatest impact on the supernatural in our lives? My brother, my sister, they may have that because they force us to believe in the face of everything that's telling us it's not so. That is faith in God. I'm not making excuses for God. I don't have to. He's too big for that. I'm just saying something in me has to hunger and thirst and fight to hold on to the faith that God has delivered to us by the fathers. Yes. Praise the Lord. Wow. Yes. We're called to go on yes. to perfection. Yes. To go out not knowing where we're going. Yep. It's a land that God's going to show us. Yes. It's a reality that God wants. To, he's already told us. It's there. You yes. just, you just got to keep moving. Yes. Amen. Keep trusting. Keep believing. Yes. And you will show up. One day you'll just wake up and say, whoa, hey, we've arrived. Right. 2 Chronicles uh, chapter 16, verses 8 and 9. 2 Chronicles 16, 8 and 9. I mean, I think it's time. If we're going to get mad, let's get mad at the devil. Right. Let's just get mad at stupidity. Yeah, that's right. Lack of revelation. Yeah. That's right. We're not the Ethiopians and the Lubans, a huge host with very many chariots and horsemen, yet because they... Thou, because thou didst rely on the Lord, he delivered them into thine hand. He's not arguing about the fact that there was a bunch of them. He said, weren't they? They, they, they were a huge army with all kinds of chariots and horsemen. And yet, because you relied on the Lord, he delivered them into your hand. That was, the, that was why he did it. Not because he felt sorry for them. Not because they were better than anybody else. They just trusted that God would get and do it. And he did. Yeah. 
For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Herein thou hast done foolishly, therefore from henceforth thou shalt have wars. So they didn't trust. He said, when you trusted, look what you got. When you don't trust, you got crap going on all the time. Amen. The real mark of a perfect heart is simply trusting God. Yes. Praise the Lord. The essence of faith is that it gives God His place and glory as God. Yes. Doesn't diminish it. By, 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 by operating in faith, we put God where He's supposed to be. Yes. Yes. Amen? Relying on Him alone. Right. That lets God be God. Right? You've heard the old cliche, you know, uh, God won't do it if you're doing it. Right. I mean, you've got to quit trying in order for God to do what God wants to do. If you're trying to do what God does, God won't. Right? right? So that's the truth. The truth is, what do we do? Our job is to believe. Yes. Period. That's it. No matter what. See, faith, faith expects from God what is beyond expectation. That's so why it says, Abraham hoped in hope. Yeah. We have expectation in areas that we know we shouldn't be expecting anything in. I mean, talking about in the natural. Uh -huh. It's called faith. Yeah. Colossians 1, uh, verse 27 through 29. Colossians 1, 27 through 29. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory. Now look, look at this. So who's, God wants to make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Whereunto I also labor. This is Paul. Striving according to his working which worketh in me mightily. So Paul's striving to be perfect. He's striving to believe in every situation and every circumstance regardless of what it looks like. Perfect in Christ is the gate to open the glory of God. Right, listen to what I'm saying. Being in Christ, being perfect, or having confidence in Christ, having faith in Christ is the door, is the key, is the gate that opens up to the glory of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Colossians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in Him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are complete in Him, which is the head of all principality and power. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Praise the Lord. By creation, by design. We are carriers of God's glory. Yes. Praise the Lord. One of the, one of the biggest problems with this idea of being perfect and exposing or displaying God's glory is religion, which is what Paul is just talking about here. Yes. Vain philosophies. And yep. it's, we've been taught that we are imperfect and have no glory. Right. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Genesis 2. Verse 7. The Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Man became a living soul. So by creation, we are children of the earth. Amen? In the sense that God formed us from the elements, from the what's ever in the earth. Amen? And then he breathed into us the breath of life, or God life, yeah. spirit life. Mm -hmm. Ours is an earthly glory. Now stay with me. That doesn't, that doesn't preclude what God can do in us. But by nature, mm -hmm. yes. 
Ours is an earthly glory. Yes. All right. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 39 through 46, Peter. 1 Corinthians 15, 39 through 46. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another kind of flesh of beasts, another fishes, another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, another glory of the stars, for one star differs from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It's raised in glory. It's sown in weakness. It's raised in power. It's sown in a natural body. It's raised a spiritual body. There's a natural body and there's a spiritual body. And let me remind you, we were crucified with Christ. We were raised with Him. We're not talking about some resurrection that's coming in the future. I'm not denying that. I'm saying that's not really what this is about here. Praise the Lord. So it's sown in dishonor. It's raised in glory. It's sown in weakness. It's raised in power. It's sown a natural body. It's raised a spiritual body. We were spiritually dead as far as God was concerned until we were born again, until we were raised up yes. together and seated with Christ in heavenly places. There's a natural body. There's a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Howbeit, that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. So we were born, amen, physically onto this earth, amen, and we were natural. Yes. We get born again, and now we have a spiritual birth. We are this new creature, this new species, amen, of man. Howbeit, that was not first which is spiritual, that which is natural. And afterward, that which is spiritual. So you have to be born again. That's what Jesus said. There has to be a second birth, amen? So it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. Praise the Lord. All right, uh, verse 49, Peter. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, everybody can say praise the Lord. Yes. Every time you look in the mirror, every time we do anything, we're, we're bearing the image, amen, of the earthy. As sure as that is, as true as that is, everybody, I can get an amen. Everybody says, yes, I am earthy. I have a natural life, amen. I have a physical being, praise the Lord. And so we, as true as that is, as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Praise the Lord. Amen. Ours is an earthy glory. In other words, it's imperfect perfection. Because it was born into this world. But God said, He's perfect. As far as His relationship with me is concerned. Because He believes. So it's Imperfect perfection. Thank you. Look, just look at all the people in the Bible. We just named three here, but there. That's this is <laughs> this is our identification, yes. folks. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. God has made us perfect in Christ, yes. in hope of glory. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. We've been given a godlike nature. We've been given the Spirit of God. Yes. To be perfect is to recognize and to acknowledge who we really are. Yes. Yeah. Spiritual, godly beings in an earthly body. Yes. Yes. See, religion's focused on the fact that God's not going to share His glory with another. And that's just misunderstanding. Because he's telling us, the reason I want you in Christ yes. is for the hope of glory. Yes. For the hope that I, my glory will be revealed. Yes. Wow. In you as it was in him. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 42, verse 5 through 9. And, and see, I, I, for me anyway, you spend half of your Christian life trying to be something you already are. And failing, and every time you fail at it in the natural, it sets you back yes. spiritually. Because yes. now you've got to go on a 30-day fast. Now you've got to, you know, you've got to, all the stuff. You know, get rid of the TV. Cut your hair. Don't cut your hair. 
wear a dress. Don't wear a dress. I'm not talking about men, obviously, but <laughs> praise the Lord. You know what I'm saying? There's rules yeah. that we can't keep. That's right. So we just keep changing the rules, thinking that somehow that's going to get us in God's graces, when in fact we are already there. And we spend so much time trying to get there that we don't do what it is we're supposed to be doing, so the glory is not revealed. Right. Just a bunch of failures. Right. Which is what we read when we read the Old Testament. Right. But isn't it interesting when you get to Hebrews 11, those same flunkies and failures, all you see is their faith. Yeah. Not one mention of their failures. Not one mention of, of Abraham trying to pimp his wife. Or not one mention of David, you know, messing with somebody else's wife. Or not, not one mention of Noah's drunkenness. And, but victory on top of victory on top of victory on top of victory. Yes. That's all that God knows about him. That's all he knows. Faith. Glory. Perfect. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. See, the sooner we get there, yes. the sooner we can wrap this mess up, yes. praise the Lord, and get on with what life is really supposed to be about. Right. Amen. So thus saith God the Lord, He that created the heavens and stretched them out, He that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it, He that giveth breath unto the people upon it, and spirit to them that walk therein, I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness, and will hold thy hand, and will keep thee, and give thee for a covenant of the people, for a light of the Gentiles, to open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison, and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare before yes. they bring forth, I tell you of them. Praise the Lord. Yes. Uh, go back to Isaiah 42, verse 1. Praise the Lord. Behold my servant whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. Praise the Lord. Spirit-filled servant. Amen. Matthew chapter 12. Verse 15 through 21. Remember, we're identified in Christ. He's our identification. Yes. The Word of God made flesh. Yes. When Jesus knew it, He withdrew Himself from thence, and great multitudes followed Him, and He healed them all and charged them that they should not make Him known. Yeah. Praise the Lord. When Jesus knew it, he withdrew. Con uh, I'm sorry, go on through 21. Uh, yeah. When Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself. He charged them that they should not make him known, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, which is where we just read a moment ago. Behold, my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved, and whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall show judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not strive nor cry, neither shall any man hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed shall he not break. Smoking flax shall he not quench till he send forth judgment unto victory. Praise the Lord. And his name shall the Gentiles trust. Yep. So he's identifying the servant as Jesus Christ. Now here's the problem. Israel turned from confidence in God to idols. They started adopting the religions of those around them and picking up on different things and so on and so forth. Look at Isaiah again, 42, uh, verse 16 through 25. Isaiah 42, 16 through 25. Praise the Lord. Stay with me because I, I, I want to... We need to settle this. See, it, it's, it's natural to be supernatural. And because of all the kind of teaching we've had, we've always turned... Anytime there's a miracle or something, we turn that person into some kind of weirdo. Yeah. Or they turn themselves into it, thinking that, you know, i got to talk a certain way or act a certain way. Yeah. No, this is your natural behavior. Right. You don't have to be weird. You don't have to be strange. You just lay hands on the sick and they recover. I mean, you just, this is just who we are. Yes. Mm. It ought to be, and that's why we do things the way we do it here. You don't see me, I mean, I do pray for people, don't get me wrong, but... I'm more interested in everybody praying because I don't have something you don't have. Right. I mean, God told me that years ago. I, Rodney Howard Bound, I was getting everywhere I went. I was trying to get somebody to give me their ointment. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> and the Lord said, what's he got that you don't have? Right. That's the truth. Well, besides a big church? 
<laughs> Praise the Lord. Not being facetious, no. But I'm, I mean, God just made it that plain to me. He's born again. You're born again. There's no measure in the spirit. You, you didn't get a little less. He got a cup, you got a half a cup. No. We all got the same thing. It's just a question of whether or not we realize that and if we'll act on it or not. And we've elevated people that just simply all they did was act on the truth. And we've elevated them to some kind of martyr status when in fact they're no different than you are. Right. Amen. The reason we call for the elders in the church is to pray for the people that are not in the church. Because right. the people that are in the church ought to be confessing their healing. I'm not saying we don't pray for them. I'm just saying that's who we are. That's what we do. We're, praying, we're supposed to be praying for them. We don't need prayer. Right. We know the truth. So I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them and crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them and not forsake them. They shall be turned back. They shall be greatly ashamed that trust in graven images that say to the molten images, You are our gods. Hear ye deaf, look ye blind that you may see. Who is blind but my servant or deep as my messenger that I sent? Who is blind as he that is perfect and blind as the Lord's servant. Seeing many things, but thou observest not. Opening the ears, but heareth not. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. Praise the Lord. This is people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes, and they are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey, and none delivereth for a spoil. None saith restore. Who among you will give ear to this? Who will hearken and hear for the time to come? Who gave Jacob for a spoil in Israel? I, mean, I hope you're listening, hearing yes. what I'm hearing because what I'm hearing is the only failure these people had was they didn't trust God. That's all. And we're saying, well, God's going to get him now. No, God doesn't have to do anything if we're not going to trust him. We don't get the benefit. It isn't like he's withholding something from us. It's just accessed one way, yep. by faith. Yep. Who gave Jacob a spoil? Israel the robbers did not the Lord. He again, he against whom we have sinned. For they would not walk in his ways, neither were they obedient unto his law. Therefore he hath poured upon them the fury of his anger and the strength of battle. And it hath set him on fire round about, yet he knew not, and it burned him, yet he laid it not to heart. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. He wasn't perfect in his heart. 42 verse 8. Now think about this. All of these things Jesus accomplished. Yes. Right? He fulfilled the law. Yes. He was obedient in everything. And now God has told us that's our identity. Yes. I am the Lord. That's my name. My glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. So what's he talking about? He's talking about giving glory to things that aren't of God. He's, he wants to share. Hey, Christ in you, the hope of glory. He wants you to experience the glory. He wants you to be a revealer of the glory. Yes. Praise the Lord. He's not withholding it from us. See, God would not just sit by while His people attributed His works, His glory, His name to things that weren't God. See, only, only to us did God give His nature, His attributes, His glory. Us. So He's saying to us, why should you who carry my glory bow down to anything that does not possess my image or my glory? Some trust in horses. Some trust in chariots. Some trust in the Republicans. Some trust in the Democrats. Some have wised up enough to know you can't trust any of them. Praise the Lord. I'm just saying. If we're giving glory, if we're giving our hope, our faith, our confidence to the doctors, and I'm not saying don't go to the doctor or to some lawyer, or to some politician. Do you see what he's talking about here? 
See, most Christians have believed so long that they have no glory, that they can't be perfect. Yeah. It's almost impossible to change their minds. Mm -hmm. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 20 and 21. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There is an immeasurable power unto him that's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Praise the Lord. Immeasurable power. Power that can't be measured. And it's at work. Where? Within us. God's glory is where? It's in the church. Yes. What's the church? You. Mm. Me. Yes. It's believers. Yes. So God's glory, God's power, yep. resides in us. Yes. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling right yeah. now. I mean, I'm feeling the Holy Spirit. I'm not mm. saying that you got to yeah. get goosebumps. I'm just saying... This yeah. witnesses to me. Yes. Hebrews 9, verse 11 and 12. It's frustrating because imagine all this power. Yeah. And what's happening with it? Yeah. Christ in you, the hope yes. of glory. But Christ being come a high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle. Now watch this because we're talking about two spiritual and, and natural, right? So Christ being come a high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands. That is to say, not of this building. We're talking about the temple itself, the physical temple, the structure. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Praise the Lord. Eternal redemption for us. Uh, Hebrews 10, verse uh, 14. By one offering, he hath perfected forever them that are perfect, or them that are sanctified or set apart, that are in Christ. So there's two parts to this. In contrast with the earthly sanctuary, he is the minister of the true tabernacle. Know ye not, you are the temple of God. Praise the Lord. The holiest of all is not only open to us all, it's in us all. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. We are yes. the veil yes. between God's reality and humanity. Yes. Praise the Lord. Anything they're going to see of God, they're going to have to see it through us. Yes. Christ opened the way through this <clears throat> more perfect tabernacle to the presence of God, the glory of God. What 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 uh, uh, Moses say? Show me your glory. He meant show me you. Let me see you. Yes. Right? Yep. So when we're talking about looking in a glass darkly, yeah. mm -hmm. can you see Jesus? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Uh -huh. God created this earth. He created. The atmosphere, yes. this, this physical environment, amen? And then, after he had created it, then he puts man in it, yep. right? And so, uh, he had this design specifically for human beings to survive in. Now, when Adam quit trusting God, what happened? He lost the glory and he became naked. God said, who told you you were naked? Right? right? So there's, a, there's another environment here is what I'm talking about that's critical to human life. Just like we can't live without air, 
spiritually speaking, we can't function without God's presence. Amen. We can live. We can survive. Yeah. But we can't function as we're supposed to function. Right. Think of it this way. You know, uh, when... I don't know how much scientific truth there is to it, but I have heard theories on this. That initially, there was a... Uh, call it a dome, but it's atmospheric over the earth. So, uh, how many of you have ever heard of uh, these, uh, I think they're called biometric uh, things that you can get into, and they heal wounds quickly, because the density of the air, it's 100% oxygen, it's all together, and so you can heal quicker, it says it slows down the aging process. I would like to get me one of these. Yeah. But I'm just saying, that's the same theory yes. as this dome that was over the earth initially before the flood, which is why people lived to be 1,000 yeah. years old or 1,200 years old. There was no pollutants. There was, it was just 100% air, you know, total oxygen. So their lives were longer. There wasn't as much disease. There wasn't as many ways to die outside of somebody killing you, right. right? But not in a natural way, right. not, not just getting a flu or something or whatever, or just getting old, because they lived for so long. Well, this is the thing that God has prepared for us. See, we can be born again. In other words, you can be on the planet that God has made available for us and made the atmosphere and so forth for us to live in, and yet not have the real purpose for living, yes. which is God, yes. which is the Holy Spirit, which is yes. His glory. Yes. Yes. See, man, lost in the fall when Adam and Eve quit trusting God, the glory departed. Right. Now, they still had atmosphere. They still had air. They still had breathing, all the stuff that they had to have. And so God said, the moment you do this, you will die. Well, they didn't die. They lived 800, 900 years or something, right? But they died spiritually. The glory was gone. Praise the Lord. So there's a difference between the presence of God and the glory of God. God's glory and presence are not necessarily the same thing. The presence of God is the active manifestation of God that fills the environment. He's everywhere. Yes. Amen. Everywhere that God exists and lives. That's everywhere. Yes. As believers, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. But a hope of glory. Yes. So we've got the reality. We've got yes. the fact that God is in us. You understand what I'm saying? We, 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 he, it's a finished, done deal. Mm, right. The hope is that we'll reveal it. Right. Right? Otherwise, you don't, it's not revealed until you die. Yeah. And then you're the only one that really knows. Right. Yeah. That's true. Praise the Lord. Yes. Except by faith. <clears throat> the glory is the open display of God's attributes and God's power. His identification, His Word, His promises. Praise the Lord. So it's easy to confuse the two, the presence or the glory. The, 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 the fact that He exists or the fact that He shows Himself to exist. See, his, his presence is all pervasive. It's everywhere, but it's invisible. Yes. His glory, on the other hand, is tangible. Yes. It's observable. Yes. Praise the Lord. It's what we call miracles or yes. whatever. Right. That's true. It may be hidden at times, but it's never invisible. Exactly. Praise the Lord. See, we've got this treasure in earthen vessels. And God says, it's the hope of glory. Christ in you, that's a done deal. It's, it's settled. It's, but the hope is, glory yes. will be revealed. Yes. So we can be like Adam. 
and be in this earth and not be, uh, you know, atheist, but never get any benefit of God being here. Matthew chapter 12, verse 37. And I'm just trying to tie some of this stuff together. To See, we, we always end up doing, we get uh, some revelation here, some revelation here, and we turn it into a doctrine. And then the next thing you know, there's a church started, and then a denomination and everything else. When it's just more revelation, it's just more of the same about God, about our relationship with Him. Amen? For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thy shalt, thou shalt be condemned. Praise the Lord. Now, another place he says, stumble not in words, and you're a perfect man. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Perfect, right? <clears throat> Full grown, mature. Mm -hmm. They've attained to a measure or a stature of the fullness of Christ that Paul talked about. Mm -hmm. If you don't stumble in word, yeah. you're perfect. See, you can, this is part of the deal. We are perfect as far as God's concerned. Yeah. But when we stumble in our confessions, yeah. in our confessions of ourselves, our confessions of our circumstances, yeah. it removes the perfection. It doesn't stop us from being perfect. It just stops, it stops the manifestation. It stops the glory yes. from being revealed. Am I making any sense? Yeah. Praise the Lord. All right, so 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 6 through 9. Wherefore also it contained in the Scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious. He that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Who is this? This is the Word of God made flesh, right? Unto you therefore which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient... The stone which the builders have disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. A stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Praise the Lord. So... James said, if any man stumble not in word, the same is a perfect man. James, look at James uh, 3, verse 2. It's not that scripture, but I just want James 3, verse 2. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. Amen? Amen. So, we're talking about stumbling. So, what I'm saying is the glory in you is manifest beginning with words. True. True. Praise the Lord. Christ in you, mm -hmm. salvation. Hope of glory. Yes. Revelation. Yes. Could say what... Uh, What Ron said here a week ago. Revealing and exposing. Praise the Lord. Hope of glory. Christ released from you. Yes. Yes. It's what Jesus was all about, right? Yeah. Releasing God. Yes. Showing that God was real. James chapter 1, verses 3 through 8. Praise the Lord. Amen. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect work. Perfect work. That you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and abradeth not and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think he shall have received anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Verse 4. But 
Let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. So we can be, according to the scripture, we can be not only perfect, but we can be entire, wanting nothing. So you can be perfect and still have some wants. You can be saved and still have issues. But he's telling us there is a way to be perfect and entire wanting nothing. So you have God, but you're a revelation of God. You have God, but you also have the glory. You also experience the glory. See, James, he, he begins to talk about the tongue and the two sides of this truth come up before him. Look at James again, James chapter 3 and verse 2. In many things we all stumble, he says. For in many things we all offend, stumble. If any man offend not in word or stumble not in his word, the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. So he gives us the will of God and then he gives us the power of grace. James 4 verse 6. He giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. So he gives us the power of grace in this blessed and not impossible idea that we could be perfect and entire wanting nothing. We can have the presence of God and we can have the glory of God. If any man stumble not in word, the same as a perfect man. And then he says, and grace is promised for that very thing. Praise the Lord. John 1, 1. About done here. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. John 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. Verse 14. We beheld the glory. Amen. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Praise the Lord. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. You are born again of incorruptible seed, the Word of God. Yes. Your glory is who you really are. Yes. Yes. The true person inside you that nobody except God has ever seen. Right. Yeah. Your full glory is God revealed in you. When God breathed into Adam, His intent was not just that Adam would have God's uh, presence, but that he would be a revealer of God or that he would be a displayer of that glory. When we release the glory inside of us, we put God on display. Something that all the churches, all the denominations, all the religions cannot, have not, and will not do. We glorify God by exposing His nature, His attributes, His promises, His Word. And when people stand, listen to what I'm saying now. We can stand on that Word. All of heaven is shouting. People here may be laughing at us. Oh, yeah, well, where's your miracle? Yeah. You see, I'm not looking for the miracle as much as I'm looking for a manifestation of God. However, He wants to do that's okay with me. I may have limited ways of seeing that or understanding it, but He isn't limited. And all God cares about and all eternity cares about is somebody trusting Him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Whenever we try to show God's glory, it's frightening. Yeah. Everybody get a little bit uptight when you're praying for the sick or when you're 
doing things that are outside the natural realm. Yeah. It's uncomfortable. Sure. And it always will be. Because if it isn't uncomfortable, something's probably wrong. Yeah. Bringing out the glory in us is a God-sized assignment. Yeah. It's too big for us on our own. And that's why it frightens us. Yeah. It's too big for humans. That's why it scares us. We may not believe we can ever do it. The very thing we were born to do. But that's exactly why we were born to do it. Because it was impossible for us to do it. He wants us to be and glorify himself in the process. This is the battle for Christianity. This is the battle of faith. The fight of faith. It's not seeing how many rules we can keep. How spotless our record can be. We want to be good people. We want to be moral people. Obviously, that just goes without saying. But that is not what God called us to. He took care of that right off the bat so we wouldn't have to. So we could focus on the revealing of Him. We need grace for it. Because we can't do it. This treasure in earthen vessels. See, God's trying to break the vessel to take our confidence away from the vessel and put it on the treasure that's in the vessel. So it will put our confidence in Him. He wants to share His glory with those that he has perfected. Those that he calls by name. His offspring. His children. How do we do it? By the word of our testimony. And the blood of the Lamb. Amen. 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 If it don't scare you. You ain't doing it right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. If it's not scary. You don't need God. Praise the Lord. It's uncomfortable to step out in faith and say what God says about the situation when you know that everybody else is arguing against it. Praise the Lord. Jesus did it. He went into his own hometown and couldn't heal many. Did he just walk out to the edge of town and sit down on a rock and start crying to his disciples saying, I don't know why God didn't do it. I don't know why it didn't work. It worked that time. He didn't say a word about it. There's nothing identified. There's nothing that he even acknowledged it. Now the writer of the scripture, he witnessed it and wrote it down. But there's nothing there that's saying Jesus even, re even reacted to it. He just went to the next town and kept doing the same thing he'd been doing. And that's what I'm saying, church. We can call things failure if we want to. But that's stupid. It's actually the height of arrogance to think that we would know. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We have a mission. Yeah. And I, it's kind of like a football season now. It's about over. But they're always saying, you've got one job to do. Yeah. Just do that one job. If everybody would just do that one job, yeah. we'd have victory. Yeah. But we're all trying to do somebody else's job. Because we think, if I help them out a little bit over there and help this out over here. No, just do your job. Yep. Your job is to believe that he has already done it. Yes. Praise the Lord. And our perfection then becomes glory. Yeah. Can you say praise the Lord? Praise Amen. Lord. It's not hard. It just takes a little guts. It just takes, it just takes pressing through when you don't have the answer. It's continue to the destination when you don't know what the destination is. Amen. Tim always wants to use this, and, I, and it's right. It's so. 
Where do I do? What do I do? How do I go? Follow me. Here's the map. Just follow me. Praise the Lord. Say what I say. And your heart will be perfect with me. And reveal my glory. We're, I'm telling you, church, we are going to see this before I'm out of here. I mean, if the Lord tarries. I know it. I swear by it. I have confessed it. Yes. Since I've been born again. Yes, Lord. And I'm not stopping now and the devil isn't causing me to change tracks or move to this way or move to the other or deviate from the truth of God's word. That's His right. word will be true That's right. from now till hell freezes over, yes. if they say. Yes. And as Job said, and David said, yet will I praise him. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. I'll see him as he is. Yes. And I'll be like him. Praise yes. the Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap. Praise God. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you all. Thank you for your patience this morning. Let's go do something for God. Amen. You can do that by just being yourself. Shake hands with our visitor. Thank her for being here with us this morning. God bless her and all of you all for being here. God bless you. Have a great week. Enjoy this